Okay, okay. Uh, so, hello. Uh, I'm Devin Kendall. I'm a, a web developer with uh, University of Minnesota Office of uh, Information Technology. So, I'm Chami Lamarcon. Same with Devin. Uh, look at the university. Yeah, and today we're here to talk about automated regression testing at testing sites using Backstop.js and Cypress.js, uh, which we'll talk a little bit about uh, how we implemented using these tools, and then to talk about these tools and give you just a quick, uh, a quick uh, uh, overview of how they work. So, oh. I thought the down arrow would do that. Thank you. That worked. <laughs> so, so, uh, re so first off, uh, why why regression things? Or first off, what are regressions? And oh yeah, we threw up the definition of a regression, a return to a former or less developed state. Um, so, and uh, in software development, like I, I, reg you know, regression can often, will often be a catch-all for uh, any, uh, any unanticipated change or unanticipated un change that comes from when you're implementing a change in your code base. Um, so regression testing aims to ensure that your existing features, your functionality, the way your app looks, uh, is maintained while you're expanding that code base. Uh, so, as you know, with Drupal, uh, or as you might know with Drupal, there's uh, a lot of things can cut, can perform changes on your sites, uh, sites uh, such as if you're uh, building something with lots of contrib modules, uh, those contrib modules have regular updates, they have database updates that can change uh, configuration, sometimes content, um, and then also, and also, just their code will change, and could and and the relationships between those. Uh, you might have a development that has relationships between those uh, different contributed modules that might not might not work with, uh, together anymore. So uh, again, uh, uh, so that's where with regression testing, you'll be able to catch discrepancies that come from this come from these uh, issues. You can uh, you can spot uh, unexpected changes coming from uh, CSS alterations. Uh, this will improve your user, user experience uh, by maintaining your visual consistency, which for us was important with, uh, for university relations so they can uh, maintain our brand standards, our sites uh, going forward, and make sure that a lot of our components uh, that we display on our sites will, dis will uh, appear correctly. Uh, and then uh, uh, the one I like is ensuring existing functionality and also uh, as on the developer side it gives us some peace of mind and like in and gives us a little bit of confidence moving forward expanding features adding features uh, uh, knowing that we can uh, uh, have some peace of mind knowing that the existing functionality stays intact and the existing presentation stays intact so a little about our use case we uh, distribute our platform's code base across uh, 2000, roughly 2,000 sites. Uh, we include a design system for custom sites, uh, which includes multiple custom modules and its own custom theme that uh, uh, all work together to, to present it. This is uh, built also to make matters more complicated for when we're expanding this. Uh, many of the sites uh, are many of the sites downstream are built. By developers who are uh, have their own custom development built on top of the functionality we're providing, so uh, therefore it becomes even more important for us to make sure that we're delivering consistency uh, for for them. So uh, our so what that <laughs> sorry so our testing comes into two parts. So visual we have visual regression the visual regression testing and then we have end to end functional testing. Uh, so these are these are things we've imp we imp ended up implementing in this past year um, uh, to help ensure help ensure these things. These are things we were doing uh, doing before but we were uh, we were doing manually uh, but by imp implementing an automated proce process for these it allows us to work quicker. So I'm going to go ahead and hand over to uh, Shamil. Shamil's going to talk about uh, visual regression testing and using Backstop.js. Hi. So, yeah, so as David mentioned, so so we have like a set of uh, theme element uh, shared with all the sites at the university. So 
and also some sites are like just light sites so they only use the theming elements we provided and some have their developers and they customize those elements but we had a problem like when we do update so we made some css changes and field changes to our components so then uh, due to some I mean, the customizations on the their ends so they are sometimes acting weirdly sometimes like they see like the things disappeared or the css changes like so then we came across with uh, we should think like uh, we should have something automated so like we can see them easily rather like we have to take a screenshot and then we have to do a stage release we have to configure confare that uh, the image with the the stage version so i mean that is kind of hard because we have like uh, i can show uh, yeah this is our like we, we have a lot of components so like this like uh, call out and slideshows button groups list navigations and all those things so then we decide okay we we should do the uh, like we should automate this so then we found uh, backstop js in our case so so backstop js is uh, basically like they are taking a uh, screenshots and they compare the screenshot and find the differences so as a result so we, we created a site which has all the elements uh, that we provide and uh, this is a, like we created in the prod environment and we have another site in site in our stage environment so when we do a stage release we run the test against the prod and stage and we find the differences so is the differ differences are like like that we want to do so then we are okay but if we see some other differences then we have to c find why those things happening so so the backstop js is very simple and straightforward to set up so let's say if you want to test your stage and production you have to write uh, you have to type only these four commands like so you, first you have to like have the correct node environment in your computer so i always use nvm because i have multiple node versions in my computer due to some theming projects so then i use nvm install i install backstop js globally so once you install so you can create backstop projects using backstop init command so that basically initiate a backstop project so once you initiate a backstop project so you will see some folders like this some files like this so this is the important file so backstop.json so this has a multiple this is a json file so this has multiple uh, configuration options so like a viewports you can have different viewports i don't know you can see yeah so yeah so yeah you can have different viewports so and you can have different id for your test so i basically created two viewports for one for phone and one for desktop but you can change you can have multiples so then you can define scenarios so each scenario got label for like you to understand when you have the test results so then you can say okay the url and the reference url so this reference url is the one they compare against so also you can have these options like hide selectors selectors remove selectors so i mean basically like we have uh, remove this uh, selectors because in our platform we have multiple uh, different units has different headers so we don't want to like sometimes these are getting changed so they adding links to in the production so we don't want to uh, get all those changes reflected on our reports so then we this is a very important value mismatch threshold so uh, the mismatch thresho threshold is sorry is a percentage difference uh, percentage of difference pixel allowed to pass the test so if you if you make this uh, to very lower value so it will complain a lot so because it's going to make it like pixel perfect uh, all those two different environments so for 
this presentation, I am going to keep it in a higher value. <laughs> so <laughs> then it will not complain a lot. So yeah. So then um, I added another scenario. So this is uh, one of the page I want to test. So yeah. So then uh, these are the reports they're giving. So basically we mostly use like uh, HTML report. And uh, this used the headless engine called Puffeter. So and yeah. So then I can run this test. Uh, yeah, so I am going to compare my local site and the production site. So because I can do some changes to local site and show the difference. So this is my local site set up on DDEV, and this is the production site. I'm going to test again. So So here I'm in the backstop uh, project, one of the backstop project I just showed you. So then I can type uh, uh, backstop reference. This will basically bring all the reference images to the project. So it will take some, like a little bit of time, like they are capturing the images from the source, from the production site. So once this done, you can type uh, backstop test. So then it is start uh, the comparison. Sorry, what are we looking at here? We can't see. Oh, sorry. So yeah, you will get a report like this. So right now I have like two viewports and two scenarios that mean total four. So all passed. So like they are matching uh, perfectly. So you can see uh, home page. Uh, this is the desktop version, and this is the phone. So and the link list, they don't have any differences. So now I'm going to do some changes to my local site. Let's say I'm going to edit this. And maybe I'm going to make it bold. So let's see. This this was one change we are introducing. Like we are going to make all the text bold in the uh, body text. So now I'm going to run the test again. So since I don't do any changes to the reference, I don't need to update the reference. I'm just need to run the test. Let me see. <laughs> As usual. So <laughs> yeah, maybe I will update the reference as well. value is pretty high so yeah I don't not trigger it so if you hover if you hover there you can see that there's a difference of 0.59 yeah in that first image but yeah. it's not triggering it yeah so yeah I think I we tested with different mismatch values yesterday so yeah, yeah. so maybe I will I will do like a very visible change Actually, maybe. just change your mismatch value in your JSON file yeah and then run the test Okay. Maybe I can change to file. What's your normal threshold? Uh, we use uh, point one. Yeah. So yeah. So now we can see in the, I think it, it triggered on the desktop. Yeah, uh, one test case is failing. So 
the difference is like you can click this one and then you can see like <laughs> yeah so yeah so this is all like what backstop provides so apart from that so i know like, like we we have to configure this json always when we need to add some more test cases or like more urls or something like that. so then we we found a way like uh, we created a repository we we added some more like uh, javascript uh, to do like this json automatic automatically build this json so we created like this is a the regression repository at the university so we have this file so basically you don't need to add all those things in the json file so this script like this config file will build the json uh, based on the values we provide here so like production url and non-production url and we can add all the paths so you don't need to keep adding the other things that are like a redundant so yeah. Sure. Can you show that zoom, the other one zoomed in a bit? The configuration file. Oh, this one? Yeah, can you zoom in? Yeah, uh, this is uh, what we provide. So, like, uh, people can fork this repository and change these values and they can start testing. So, this is, yeah, this is the help guide we have so unfortunately the repository is not available to public so it is only inside the u so yeah but the documentation is there in public so that's just all the urls that you're testing on your site yeah can you point to a site map or something to generate yeah so that, that is the same i worked for this presentation, but it like uh, it's a bit complicated sometimes, like reading the XML and it could take some time. So <laughs> then I choose this path. So like simple, but you of course you can do with the sitemap. Yeah. Okay, that's nice. To know. Yeah. Okay, maybe Devin can uh, present the. Um, so I'm going to talk about end-to-end -end functional testing, uh, which is the other half of uh, half of our strategy for. Uh, uh, our automated testing. So the, again, and then functional testing, uh, it's verifying existing functionality uh, in, we're making sure it's preserved, we're introducing changes, and this is actually done by stepping through the actual user flow of an application. And it's, so the end-to-end -end functional test actually goes through and does everything an actual end user will do with your application. Um, we chose Cypress JS. Um, Cypress JS is, runs in, uh, runs all in JavaScript, or it's written in JavaScript, runs on Node.js. Um, we chose it because it was relatively straightforward. It was much easier to set up than Selenium, which is a very common uh, test runner. The uh, found their, I'm of the opinion their documentation is very good, uh, and uh, it has nice built-in features like it will uh, it will automatically uh, await for responses when you perform actions with it, which uh, it's not perfect, which I'll actually get into. So I'm, I'm going to go into, I'm going to show real quick how it works. I'm then going to talk about some uh, roadblocks that we ran into that if you're trying to implement this with Drupal, uh, will, will probably help you. So you might be able to uh, not run into those things that we did. Um, so let's go ahead and we're going to jump over. I'm going to show you how, how it looks when it runs. So I only make this big and big it and big in it. So, when you first when you first set up uh, a you can set up a Cypress project. They have a they have a again just like a lot of modern tools a, a pretty a, a good quick start. But you can uh, once you first set up Cypress a Cypress as a project, you will be able to run it and it will open up a browser uh, a Chrome browser or a uh, actually it's run this is probably Electron. Uh, a browser that you uh, and you'll be able to choose between end-to-end -end testing and component testing. We're doing end-to-end -end testing. You will likely do end-to-end -end testing 
when you are uh, uh, dealing with Drupal. Component testing, if you happen to be doing a React application, something with like something with JavaScript like uh, components that you can test in isolation, that's what component testing is. If you're probably not doing that with Drupal unless you're doing some crazy stuff with your theme. So we're going to go. I'm going to choose Chrome, uh, but you they're out of the box. They have the options for to you run in Chrome, Ele Electron, or Firefox. Um, so we'll go ahead and open this. It opens up the dashboard. The dashboard uh, will sh display the list of specs they call them uh, and the, that will run, and the specs are in your in your file in your file structure. I won't go and look at, but you in your project file structure, it it matches what you're seeing here. Uh, you have a in end to end folder, and inside those, each of those files are a spec, and inside those specs are a test. Or are multiple tests, and usually you will probably make each one of those specs around a single feature or component that you're testing. So let's go ahead and uh, show what this looks like. So I have one where we're uh, testing to make just running through and building, uh, making sure like our slideshow, our follow slideshow component works correctly. So this is gonna build up. It's creating a test page to put it in. It runs through. It's actually adding image. It checks to make sure that we have test images, uploads images for the slideshow, uh, which is going through and, and placing them in, in the media in the uh, media library, or uploading them as media items ahead of time. So it runs through, and we're going to have a fail, aren't we? <laughs> okay. So we're going to go ahead and rerun this. So one thing, this ties into something I'm going to talk about that is an issue with this. When, I, when we run these, when we run these, thank you. Uh, when, we run, when we run these, uh, which I'll show in a second, as headless, which we run during uh, uh, when we're testing our changes to our code base, what ends up happening is they they can these tests can be fuzzy. They can be they can be fragile, and they could intermittently fail. Uh, you can set it up to try multiple times a try a test multiple times until it gets a success before before just yelling at you. Um, which in head when, in headless we do that. I usually try three times, and then if it, it if it fails, then uh, then I go look and see what's going on. So here, uh, it, all the tests ran successfully. We, you saw that ran through very quickly. Uh, you can actually go back in Cypress. You can look at every step of your test. When you go and hover and, or click on any one of these logged uh, steps in your test, it will actually show you the, the DOM state right at that point in time in the test. So, for instance, coming in here, going in, adding the item, Yeah, uh, that's 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 basically Cypress. Um, so, let's go back and I'll talk about a few things here. This, yes. Does it record all that as like? It does. It will it will it will it will record it as an uh, MP4 uh, or an MPEG. Uh, so you can, which I'll show in a second. Um, the you can and that's all configurable. Uh, so when when I run it, I'll do this. Let me run this uh, headless actually. So uh, I'll go ahead and close this. Does it depend on your DOM too to find the fields? Is that how it's finding those? Yes, uh, I'll show. Yeah, I'll show. I'll show how the tests work as far as like it's using a query selector, basically to to find to find the items it's interacting with, kind of like sorry. jQuery. Kind of like Selenium. Oh, sorry, I couldn't see where you. Yeah, yes, yes kind of like Selenium. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see where I open. Uh, see where I I'll run. We're gonna run it. So this, in this way, we're running it headless. It's uh, opening. It's uh, uh, running each of each of the te the specs in the suite. I've truncated these a lot. Like there's only like four running. I didn't want to run our whole suite because we'd be sitting here for like a few minutes. Um, but uh, it's go it's going through. It's running that slideshow right now. It is running a headless browser, which means you're not seeing it happen, but it is happening in the it's happening in the background. You, and so you, if you're working, you can 
run these tests and continue doing whatever else you're doing while these are going. Um, successfully ran. It's doesn't like it. It tells you the time that it took for each test to run. Uh, it's highlighting in yellow that one because it doesn't like that it's taking that long. But that's uh, it's a kind of a complex item. Uh, so, and as you see, each one of these items when it gets done, uh, it has a video output, which I will show in a second here. Actually, uh, I want to wait till it gets done here with the. It's nearly done. Oh, go ahead. If I go and let's say, okay, I want to see see how this test actually ran. Oh, we'll let that finish. I'll see the final report. Boop, all specs passed. I can go in here. So if I want to see if one happened to fail, um, which I don't have, which we can, if we want to make an example of that. But for now, if I want to go, okay, something's going on with that test. I want to see what happened during it. I can go in here. Uh, I can go to that mp4 that was generated off of it. Um, in this case, I'm going to command click it from here to just automatically open it. And it's a uh, it's a video of that exact interface running. Um, not as great as watching it in real time because you obviously this is a video. I don't have access to kind of peek into the, the log happening. But you can quickly see what's going on. Uh, and at that point, I think if something fails at this point, we I would look at this, and then I go. I would go to look at the. Then I open up the dashboard and run it manually um, to see what's going on and step through it and see what actually is failing. So here go. It's going through, making sure each item fit, each item works, each of the 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 click the changes work. It's actually changing, making sure that the new image is there. It's scrolled down. You can't see it because it's. Let me scroll up. Uh, it's working here in mobile. Oop. But uh, it runs through and does and makes sure that the functionality works works on mobile. You can change. You can actually have different tests that run at different viewports, uh, and, and it's uh, so. Let's let me go back here. So let's talk a little bit about this. Um, so the structure. The, so how the tests end up looking. You have your inside that's your spec file. You have a function. Uh, it's called a, a the. The tests are are a function of Cypress called IT, or you can, or I believe you can use a, well, a function called describe. But you pass in. I brought actually. I think this won't come through to the video because I'm using a laser pointer right now. But you 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 pass you pass in your test name, you and then the anonymous and then an anonymous function inside. You put in your se a sequence of actions, and those sequence of actions basically look a lot like jQuery. Uh, so they are, uh, if you're familiar with that. So you can do a, you uh, commonly will use a method, uh, so you, sorry. You'll have an object called CY that you're, that you're using, using, using like jQuery. You, you'll call the git method, the, the, git, the git method. Uh, you put your button, your actual uh, query selector in here. Then you just string methods along. It's really uh, add string methods along on there. So the most common would be something like should, and should uh, uh, make, lets you do a, what is called an assertion. And this assertion basically is saying, I expect this thing to be true, or I, expe I expect this this to be true. Um, when you do, uh, just by default, when you run a git, uh, git uh, the git method on like a, on a query selector, that implicitly actually that implicitly implies that or implicitly tells Cypress that that thing, that thing should exist in the DOM. Um, then should, I want to make sure it's visible. And then I want to click it. The, and the click is not an assertion, but just an action telling you, telling us we want to click. So uh, when you're, so this is where the probably when you're writing tests for it, where it becomes the most difficult, or what, what you, the most time consuming, especially with Drupal, uh, so Drupal, Drupal has a lot of uh, when you're like Drupal applications end up having a lot of DOM elements, a lot of divs, a lot of classes, things like that, a lot of IDs. Um, so this this is actually a piece of advice for write, when writing tests in general, not just for Drupal, but uh, having using uh, not using your CSS or not using class names for selectors, but using things like a like data attributes or things things that will change less often, and I think for Drupal, 
your Drupal uh, in Drupal every in the admin especially uh, every item will have a Drupal data selector or da sorry data Drupal selector that is unique to that item. Uh, it's and it's that selector is based off of its actual structure in Drupal. Uh, the machine the machine names of the of those uh, of the entities that it's within. Um, so that will likely not change. It's possible it could, but. Um, it likely would not change unless there was some significant uh, structural change with Drupal core or, or that uh, or that mod that entity with the entity that you're interacting with so if like paragraphs change something drastically and how and how they're how they're structuring things um, so you're able to so when we you'll notice in those tests we were logging into Drupal admin. Uh, you have you can Cypress can uh, log into the session, uh, and it has the it has the ability to uh, 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 has the ability to log into this log into a session and author or to authenticate. Let me slow down. Has the ability to authenticate. Um, you can do that by with the session method, and you're able to uh, inside you would you would uh, name your session. You would end up passing it passing in a function and that function would basically send a request that like that log that uh, uh to drupal's endpoint that logs in so if you're implementing this with drupal the biggest thing uh, a big uh, thing that was a pain point especially for our use case because we were interacting with a page builder system that was built with uh, layout builder uh, and paragraphs uh, that ends up getting complex. Uh, the issue that Cypress is very has a great feature, as I was mentioning before, that it will. It's pretty smart about when you when it clicks on something, it expects like a network event to happen, and then in turn it waits. It's kind of looking for that to happen before moving on. Um, the problem is like Drupal has a lot go, going on. So, for instance, uh, what can what can actually happen? Uh, what can actually happen with it um, is like you know if you're in Layout Builder, you, we save, we end up, we come in here and save, we save our widget. We go back here. I'll just use the the. How oh, is it going to run through? Oh, sorry. This is a video. Well, go ahead and actually go ahead and run that video. But if we go in there, so when. Uh, when Drupal or when you're going in and saving like a uh, uh, item into a layout, multiple actually multiple network events end up happening. You end up save it. You end up saving that. Uh, you save that modal uh, and basic. And then also, let's say it comes back. You know, we go into the media library here. Me and when we go into the media, we go into the media library. We select an item. We insert it into there. It goes back to the to that block. Uh, that block page and that block page is uh, has to re it basically re-renders itself. It ha it also has children that also uh, go out and make their own calls. Uh, calls. Um, so what ends up happening is uh, things might not be there when Cypress is looking for them. So test the the biggest problem we had was test intermit would intermittently fail because of this because of how quickly how quickly it would take for things to render or have uh, based because sometimes and sometimes it would not just be the network events so Cypress does have uh, Cypress does have a way for intercepting network events which is very useful that's half of the problem so you can actually you can actually intercept uh, any calls to a certain endpoint that you that with this intercept method. So we uh, so when you you would, can pass that in, it can you can put in glob patterns if you want to like match multiple things, um, and it will save it as we'll just call they call these aliases. I won't get too far into it, but it's basically a, a structure that you use instead of assigning something to a variable, you you assigning it to this alias that you can ac access with this at symbol in the next line there. So you can tell it to wait for that event to happen, and you, this code actually is checking to see if that that event happens. We want we want to wait for that to happen. We want the response code to be a 200. So we want to wait for it. that is a successful call, and before we move on, that's half of the problem. As the other half of the problem is, even with all that, even even after even after network the network events, what can actually what can happen? After that, 
Drupal Drupal JavaScript is Drupal's JavaScript system, which usually most of the things we're dealing with are in uh, JavaScript behaviors, which basically attach themselves on attach themselves whenever there is a uh, after an AJAX call and when something changes, they a lot these things repaint themselves. They run they run their attach methods again for every every everything. So what can happen? It, it can take a little time for the, all those things to finish initializing. So one thing that ended up saving, uh, ended up fixing this for um, us was found a, a I would say a useful third party a useful third party plugin for this was wait for stable DOM. So one solution to get around what I was describing would be a clunky solution be setting timeouts waiting for things to happen. Not great. That's clunky. I don't don't like doing that. Wait for stable DOM is probably a, a little better in that. It when you put this command in your test, it will end up waiting for. It puts a time. It puts a timeout where the it, actually it's a, it sets an event listener where it's listening for mute, uh, mutations on the DOM, and it waits for a, you could, uh, a certain amount of time where no more mutations are happening on the DOM before it moves on. So that ended up if you happen to implement tests with Cypress and you're finding them failing, mysteriously failing uh, at, at intermittently, this ended up uh, making them a lot, making things a lot sta more stable. Um, let's see. Uh, lastly, or not lastly, but uh, Cypress lets you create custom com commands, which are basically basically custom methods on, on, on Cypress that will, you can put uh, reusable pieces, pieces of logic in here that you want to use in your test. So, for instance, uh, when you, when you saw like the, when we, when we saw our test, the steps to add, since we have a lot of follow components that are just basically placed in Layout Builder, we have a command that is just add a add a add a follow component to the Layout Builder, and it's the same over and over again. So we reuse that, we end up reusing that. It makes our tests a lot shorter. We did, we, we are a lot less bloated. Um, And I think the last little, like, this will be a last little speed bump, um, I think I want to talk about with, if you're implementing Cypress with Drupal is uh, CKR5. CKR5 is really a really complicated little applet. Um, so it has a CKR5, normally with Cypress, you have a command that lets you just uh, uh, pass a string into a, a type method, and that type method types into types into the input field that you select. Really easy. The problem is CK5. The field of a CK5 field is not really just an input field. It's actually uh, it's actually uh, it's a it's it's a div that is writable, but also it's doing a lot of things. It's 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 taking input and it's put, passing it up to a data model and that data model is coming back down and being being rendered as a view. Um, so it's it, it's really complex. So to the regular method to interact with it with a like just typing text into CKR5 doesn't work. So a use another useful third party plugin we recommend is Cypress Real Events. So the the events in Cypress they're Regularly, they're simu they're simulated by J by JavaScript. Which, if you're ever triggering an event in JavaScript, uh, anything like that, it will automatically be not it. It, it doesn't come up too often, but certain things might not let you uh, might not let those actions actually trigger what you're wanting to do because they're not trusted by the browser because the browser is aware that it's not a human being doing it. Uh, so Cypress Real Events gets around this. It only works in Chrome, um, but it's so. Uh, it does not work in Firefox, but because uh, it's using Chrome, the Chrome Dev Tool protocols to basically get around this and uh, trigger actual events. So, to get around the issue we we're talking about before, where you can't interact with CK or five, what you can do is find get the data selector. You're looking for the CK content, content editable true. You're going to put fo you put focus on it, and you use this method that's provided by the Cypress real events real type. So the real type isn't concerned about that it's targeting a input element and, in, and injecting that, that text into it. 
it's really just you have a real tight method, even though it's strong on here, or even though it's strong onto this uh, object, the real type method really is just uh, uh, typing keyboard commands. So the real so this will actually put focus on like as if you're a user, put focus on that CK CK editor field, and type in type in the text you want. So anyway, that's that was a, that's another headache you'll run into if, when you're dealing with CK or five and trying to interact with it with Cypress. Whew. So quick pain points, which are probably are gone, but again. Drupal is div soup, makes finding good query selectors difficult. Uh, Drupal admins uh, can have many nested items with their own JavaScript behaviors that initialize, and Cypress won't be aware of them out of the box, and you have to circumvent that. Um, so, uh, and single, uh, right now we're trying to figure out how to get single sign on authentication to work correctly with it. Uh, so, right now our test site, we're using just the regular uh, Drupal authorization, but we would, we're, we're, we're still working, uh, having difficulties getting it to work with single sign on. Uh, and then um, uh, query selectors can break when changes are introduced. And that's probably the least fun thing to do is having to fix tests when there's not actually a problem. <laughs> so happens a little bit, um, but uh, overall it's worth, it's worth, worth doing, but it can, that can be a frustrating experience. But it's why, again, why trying to, with those tools, try, trying to make your tests less brittle is, is definitely uh, takes some care. Um, and that's, that's, uh, that's, ran through that. Uh, I will open up to any questions you have and, uh, from that. <laughs> I would assume MFA would be an issue as well. What's that? MFA would also be an issue of single sign-on. <laughs> yes, yeah. sorry, thank you. Yeah, yeah, that, that's been an issue. Actually, what, with our system, uh, our, what I was able to get around that um, uh, well, actually, I was able to basically structure it where you would, it, it's, it's not perfect, you wouldn't be able to run it without, run it and walk away, but I could get it to where, run the test, oh, and then all of a sudden your, your phone pings while it's running, and you have to like, okay, go. Um, problem is we're running, in, I'm not sure if, if, if uh, uh, you're human, but like we probably run, we run into the stale request issue with Shibboleth, uh, with Shibboleth. Um, it, it's, I have not found a way around it yet. It seems to just come like, like just always trigger every time when trying to run run uh, with a test runner. Um. Yeah. What was that? The. Uh, you're saying that's like the what were you saying? Yeah, this stale requ it's a stale request issue. The, it's like the what's preventing us from uh, right now from getting it working with uh, uh, our our uh, single sign on is there, the I don't know if you've encountered stale request getting a stale request. It seems to happen every time. Uh, some some uh, something about something about the request coming from the test runner it's a trigger is it? Yeah, because we have SAML based single sign on. So, but if you use like a Google sign on or something like that, like word based, so it is easy. But yeah, our one is complaining a lot about uh, which I'll have to look into. Best, they'll even tell you if you look at Cy Cypress best practices. They recommend like not to like when you're logging in to not just like don't don't make a test that goes to the page and types in password and enter. And they they recommend doing it programmatically. So need to work, which we can do with normal Drupal, but haven't found a way to do that with our with with single sign on or with our system. Hi, yes. Yeah, um, the, the tests that you're, you're showing seem to be like on a, on a site level. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, how these systems work, or would you write, uh, would you write these tests on a monitoring level as well to, to test part of the functionality that's just part of the site? Yeah, I mean, like, uh, they're not unit tests, mm -hmm. I will say. Like, they're, uh, I think if you're, like for a module, it probably you'd probably rely more on, you know, te testing the functional uh, bits of functionality. If the if the module has a user interface, then yeah, like I would I would yes I would, you you absolutely could do that. I and I, I think that would that wouldn't be a bad idea, especially if it's something that's that's key. Like if you need to make sure that I can go uh, the the I can go and interact with the the, the web UI from a module. Yes, if it's if it's the if it's user facing. Yes, if it's if you're just testing like. Actual functionality, that's probably unit test. You're probably going to just go in and test like the individual pieces of functionality of the of the actual code. Um, yeah. 
So can you use it for um, content types, testing content types, especially the more complex ones, for you know adding a new uh, item or editing, deleting? Um, and you have some complex fields. I mean, I would assume that you could set those up on this. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I mean, and and a lot of times, like the, that. That's which I do have a test to like make sure that like adding a node works. It, that's stuff that probably will never break, and and I question if it's even necessary to have those. Um, but I mean, but it's good to know they work. Uh, but yeah, I, the thing the things that I feel would end up failing, uh, like where I worry about is like if you're using some complex like complex field widgets, mm -hmm. things like that. I want to make sure that those are still working correctly. Um, That's yeah. what I'm talking about. It's yeah. not the node itself, but it's mm -hmm. like we use something called simple hierarchical select, and oh. that has gone. That's been that's been a fussy one. Okay. Also, if you've got a bunch of holes, it would be good probably to check all the connections. Would you have problems with uh, captures or honeypot or some other like spam tools too with this? It's like, well, I was like, I, that's trying to think. I haven't done that. I haven't done it, like, like, do, like submitted a web form with it. Um, yeah, you probably would. Like, I, yeah, you, you would run in, you would definitely run into, I, I'm not sure you would have to do something to circumvent CAPTCHA. Um, Wouldn't, it, um, so that would be anonymous users that are hitting your site. That's true. But you're typically going at um, authentic, authenticated user. Uh, processes where people are creating nodes or slides. Yeah, or that that's kind. mainly what we're testing. And usually we turn off uh, CAPTCHA and Honeypot for authenticated users because they're already authenticated in the system. We know who they are exactly. Yeah. But if yeah. you have a generic web form that you're testing, then that would. Yeah. Like and does, does, do you know, does Cypress, when you're running through those, does the browser think that it's a uh, uh, Human, can you can you would it would it uh, generate sort of like touch commands or inputs? I guess if you have typing, then that would that would tell. It does. I mean, it's running. It's firing it with JavaScript. Um, I mean, I guess like like I said, the browser the, it those those events that happen from it. Um, they the the browser does know that they're firing from JavaScript. I'll say, which that's it. Uh, that's where that the real event the real events gets around yeah. that. So that 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 one I think yeah then the browser probably wouldn't be aware if it's if it's real or not. I'm not sure, but if you're talking about getting around like uh, like like captcha or like or those managed challenges of some kind, I'm not I'm not really sure how what what strategies those are using and how to get around those. <laughs> it's like so, um, you're looking for things like yeah. scrolling, text input from the from the screen. You know, a real browser interaction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I have a feeling as fast as it's moving, I would I would suspect that like the, those things will probably pick up pretty quick. That they're we're not trying human. to do exactly, <laughs> exactly. The things that we're trying <laughs> that they're trying us. Yeah, they're looking for us so, not doing. So I probably <laughs> there's probably that's something good to look. I'm and that's that's something I'm going to look into after this is like getting around cap because that's probably a pretty common. If I Google, I'll probably go, go Google that after this because that's a. I'm guessing that's a pretty common issue with Cy uh, with writing tests with Cypress is getting around those things. Um, yes. Does Cypress have any capability to to generate tests by recording your interaction with the browser? Yes, they have plugins for that. It, there is like an experimental feature of the dashboard to write the to actually like modify the tests in that suite. There's also plugins for recording your 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 interactions and gives you like. The query selectors and actions in Cypress, Cypress that you can copy over, but they're not great. <laughs> it's like the reason being is like they're not smart enough to know what's the best selectors to use in the context, because they'll probably end up like using classes or using an ID. Oh, use an ID that where uh, uh, the IDs in Drupal's admin aren't aren't the, aren't the best to use. So. I, I I ended I really wanted to, them to work for me. I've tried and. Uh, um, I ended up in, ended up not finding much use in them. Okay. Any other any other questions there? Uh huh. 
very little bit of limitation in intensity of the applications. So that's also another thing uh, to keep in mind. It's mostly works based on this form. Oh well, you well I can show. We can take a look real quick. You can test on. You can test for different. Uh, I mean, it's it's uh, not simulating. It's not simulating devi the device as much as just uh, running at different screen widths. I'll say, but um, you there is uh, there is a function of like whoop. zoom. Oh, okay. I can't zoom. I, I don't know the command to zoom in PHP Storm, apparently. Yeah, uh, I think for mobile websites, that's fine, but for applications... Oh, you mean like actual app like native apps? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not... Yeah, I don't think I don't think Cypress might be... For, yes? Uh, five minutes until the next session. So, well, we should probably... Wrap, okay, anything, anything else other than that, we'll, we'll go ahead and break there. Thank you so much for letting me act.